Hey, good morning everyone. This is Sergeant First Class Nathan Hutchison with Off the West, otherwise known as the Army Entertainment Office. We have a treat today, uh, Sergeant First Class Jesse Robbins with the Golden Knights is here with us. And he's going to be talking about his time in the Army so far, what he does for a living now, and just the all-around awesomeness that is the Golden Knights. I don't want to go too much into detail because I'm going to let him do that, and that's what you're listening to this for, is not to not to hear me drone on. But I'm going to give the floor to Sergeant First Class Robbins, and he can tell you all about the great things that the Golden Knights do. Sergeant Robbins. The United States Army Parachute Team was formed in 1959 here on Fort Bragg, North Carolina. When the team was formed, there was 19 original members. Each of these members were selected to assist in the development of modern parachuting techniques, provide world-class competition parachutists, and to perform live aerial demonstrations in support of the Army's public relations and our recruiting mission. I'm Sergeant First Class Jesse Robbins, a native of Houston, Texas. I've been in the Army for 17 years as of July 21st of 2021. I'm currently stationed here on Fort Bragg, North Carolina uh, with the United States Army Parachute Team. I am the Gold Demonstration Team Leader. And before we get to that, I would like to tell you how I got to where I am now. I graduated in 2003, and I immediately started working, and I decided I wanted to be a firefighter as a civilian, and talking to a bunch of uh, uh, firefighters in the Houston district, a lot of them told me that I needed to have at least 60 credit hours or three years in the military before I could put a packet in to go to the fire academy. So I went the route of going to college. As uh, went to went to college, I was also working full time. And one day when I was in class, there was just something that came over me and just told me I needed to do something more. And I left class that day. I went to my mom's job. She's a she worked at a public library in Houston. And as I was walking into the library to go have lunch with my mom, a recruiter was walking out of the library and just the type of person that I am being polite, as we crossed paths, I gave him a greeting, uh, how's your day? And he stopped in his footsteps, turned around and looked at me and said, you ever thought about joining the army? And without skipping a beat, I replied with, yes, I've thought about it. Uh, and then from there, um, he told me what the benefits of the Army can do, told me about the 150 jobs plus jobs that I can do in the military that can relate to what I want to do outside of the military. Um, and then 12 days later, I was enlisted into the Army and I was shipping out to our, uh, our uh, basic training. Um, so that was kind of how I joined the Army. Uh, there, I, I wanted to do something more, and I, the door opened for me. It was just a guy walking by me, me just being polite, saying, how's your day? And 12 days later, I was joining the Army. Um, so when I came into the Army, I decided uh, I picked my job or my MOS uh, to be a parachute rigger, which is a 92 Romeo in the military world, or if you're out looking, or if you want to go talk to a recruiter and you want to ask, tell them you want to be a parachute rigger, they're probably going to know what a 92 Romeo is. So I picked that job, and that job guaranteed that I was going to jump out of air, airplanes, which fulfilled my high energy, you know, per, like personality that I am. And also, it, uh, my job is to pack personnel parachutes for the entire Army, airborne community in the Army. Um, and then to me, that's like, that's a lot of responsibility. And I grew up pretty fast being, growing up and having to be more responsible, higher than my peers. Um, so I knew that was something that I wanted to do. When I joined the Army, 
Uh, I went, my first duty station was Fort Benning, Georgia. And Fort Benning, Georgia is the home of the airborne. Um, they have, that's where you go to school to learn how to jump out of airborne, uh, out of airplanes. So I got there and uh, my job there was to pack personnel parachutes for the airborne school. That is a lot of responsibility. You know, you pack 25 parachutes a day, seven days a week, and you get off of work, you go home, and you continue to live your personal life while there are people still, there's a possibility that they're grabbing your parachute out of a, out of a, a locked cage, and putting it on their back, going, getting on an airplane and jumping out of it while you're at home, you know, taking care of your family. So that was a very big responsibility and I really loved that part about my job, that no matter what, I will be sure always that I will be sure that every parachute that I pack is going to be the safest parachute to my ability. So I spent about three years there at Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, I left Fort Benning, Georgia, and I got assigned to a to the first special forces group airborne in Fort Lewis, Washington, which is now Joint Base Lewis McCord. There, while I was attached to the special forces group, I had it opened up my opportunities to go to a plethora of schools. Uh, I went to Airborne Jump Master School where you learn how to inspect the jumpers prior to them getting on the airplane, how to make sure the aircraft is safe and make sure that the drop zone, communication between the drop zone and the airplane, everything is good for the, for the airborne soldier to jump out of the airplane safely and land on the drop zone. Again, that is putting a lot of responsibility on one person to put 69 you know, soldiers out of an airplane at one time. Um, I was also able to go to the military free fall school. The military free fall school is where they teach you the tactical aspects of jumping out of an airplane at a high altitude, opening your parachute at a lower altitude and infiltrating a drop zone. Because I'm a 92 Romeo parachute rigger, uh, we have to be qualified on every parachute that we pack. Therefore, that opened the door for me to go to the military free fall school. After doing military free fall school for some time, I did, uh, I got back and then I deployed to Afghanistan for, I was there for about 12 months in Afghanistan. My job in Afghanistan was to resupply using my, my skills as a parachute rigger to rig, resupply um, ammo, uh, food, medical supplies, and everything, anything that the guys in, on the ground needed. In a, in, a, in a hurry. After my deployment, I got back to Fort Lewis. Uh, a, a duty assignment came up that my qualifications allowed me to get, and that was at the Yuma Test Evaluation Command, or Yuma Proving Grounds for the Army Test Evaluation Command. While I got to the, when I got to Yuma, uh, to the Airborne Test Force, my job there went beyond the just the Army. Our job was to test all of the aerial equipment for DOD completely, not just the Army anymore. So I was working outside my scope. Um, I, I, there, my, test, my job title was a test jumper. So we tested new parachute systems. Now, we didn't just put new parachute systems on our back and then jump out of airplane and hope that it works. There's a whole process that we do um, that to make sure the parachutes are safe before they put them on a soldier. Um, this was the developmental test portion of jumping. Uh, I was there. I was there in Yuma when the military got their newest military freefall parachute. I was also there part of a test for a new aircraft that wanted to do airborne operations. I was also part of the um, increasing the gross weight of, a, of an aircraft so they can carry more fuel to f fly further distance and still safely put 
paratroopers out on the battlefield if they needed to. There is when everything comes together for the Golden Knights for me. As I was there, the Yuma Proving, Yuma Proving Grounds used to be the home, the winter home for the United States Army Parachute Team. They used to go down there for winter training every year. The weather's better. It's not as cold in January, February, and March. And um, there's more opportunities for them to train. Now, they weren't there while I was stationed there, but their legacy was still there. Everywhere I went, they talked about the Golden Knights. There was pictures about the Golden Knights, um, videos of the Golden Knights jumping into the parade field there in white, at the Yuma Proving Grounds. And so that put like a little bug into my head. What are the Golden Knights? While I was there in Yuma, I transitioned in from the tactical portion of jumping military free fall to jumping a sport canopy, if you will, a sport canopy, which is a lot smaller. And my job as the test jumper was to uh, provide air to air video. So when we would get our tests that will come in for a new equipment for aerial delivery, we will rig the guys, we will hook up the guys on their new parachute with the new items put them in the airplane and they will have a camera, a camera flyer with them. So a camera guy will jump out and video them in free fall and see how the equipment flies, if it's safe, if, if, it's, if it's doable and able to debrief that on the ground. That's when I started getting more proficient on jumping military free fall or skydiving. While I was stationed there, I got a call from, it was, it was coming up to my time to leave uh, the Yuma Proving Grounds and the Airborne Test Force. And I got a call from a Sergeant Major and I've never got a call before from a Sergeant Major. So it was super unorthodox for me. <laughs> I answered the phone and uh, Sergeant Major says, is this Sergeant Robbins? I was like, yes, this is him speaking. This is Sergeant Major. Um, I'm with the United States Army Parachute Team, the Golden Knights. The Golden Knights are start, we want to bring up and start a new team within the Golden Knights that go out and help the military free fall teams in the Army. I was looking, your name came across my desk. I was looking at all your, your, your schools, all your credentials, and you are, you fit everything that we need to help start this team. And he asked me, would you like to take this job? I've never turned down any kind of opportunity in the Army, but this was a big request. And I, I asked Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major, can you give me 30 minutes just to collect myself and figure out if this is something I wanna do? 30 minutes later, I call Sergeant Major back and I tell him, Sergeant Major, I, I, I would like to accept your, your offer. And he said, okay, we're gonna start working on getting you down here to Fort Bragg and signing into the United States Army Parachute Team the Golden Knights. I talked to everybody. Once I finally came up on orders to, uh, orders to go down to Fort, uh, come down to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, everybody I talked to were, they were more excited than I was about me coming to the Golden Knights. Like I said, in Yuma, Golden Knights were everywhere. They're talked about how professional they are and just how family oriented these teams are when they are around. I really didn't have too much information about the Golden Knights until I actually got here to Fort Bragg and stepped foot into our headquarters. The first thing you walk into you walk into these double doors and there is a shiny knight armor right in front of you. And it's just, it symbolizes what the guys here on this team represent. You know? So I sign in, I talk to the Sergeant Major and he tells me, Sergeant Robbins, I really do appreciate you taking this position. There's only one thing I need you to do. I need you to try out to become a golden knight so I can put you on this team. 
and he asked me, do you want to try out? And let me tell you what tryouts entail. So we have an in-house selection, uh, an in-house uh, Golden Knight ass assessment and selection program, which is ran by the members of the Golden Knight. It is a six to 10 week process where you wake up, you do PT, you go out to the drop zone, they teach you how to pack your parachute, how to fly the parachute, and how to safely land in the target area, on a target. I didn't know I was getting into that until I got to, until I signed in and I went to tryouts. And going through tryouts, I was 32 years old, I, I was already a, a sergeant first class in the army. I've already had back surgery from a previous getting hurt down in Yuma, Arizona, uh, jumping. And every night I would tell myself, why, why are you going through this? You, you're beating yourself up, you know, uh, but the type of person I am, the drive that I have, Every night I told myself and I would call my family and tell them, I don't think I can do this. And they, my family is what helped me push through to make it, you know, and they, by then they already knew a little bit of history of the golden Knights, And it, they would tell me it's worth it. Like you need to do this. It, it is going to be a huge accomplishment for you. So I make it through. I make it through the Golden Knight assessment and selection, and I was selected to be a Golden Knight in 2017. And I immediately went to the black demonstration team. I spent two years on the black demonstration team. Uh, my first year as a new teammate, and your job as a new teammate is to be a, a sponge and take everything in that all the knowledge from the the experienced jumpers that are there is to take it in and to absorb it and implement that. After my, after my first year on the Golden Knights, my team leader saw that I was really good at making videos and editing photos. So he, an, a position opened up on the team to become, to be the, the aerial videographer. And I took that in a heartbeat. I was no longer jumping the accuracy parachutes. And I'll talk a little bit about that, the accuracy parachutes in a little bit. I was no longer jumping the accuracy parachutes. I was flying above the formations as they were skydiving. I was following canopies under, under canopy, canopy um, relative work. And just my job then was to capture what the Golden Knights actually do in the sky and present that to the American public. I, it was a great um, a reward to myself that I pushed through everything and I gave it my all, my new guy, my new teammate year to get, you know, put in that position. After that, uh, I did a year as a videographer and I was doing pretty good at that. I got offered a job to go to the gold demonstration team to be the assistant team leader. Again, didn't shy away from the responsibilities. I went, I did a year as the assistant team leader. And then after the end of that year, I was selected to be the team leader of the gold demonstration team. And that's where I am today. Just a little story about the different teams we have on the Golden Knights. So we have the two demonstration teams, the black and gold demonstration team, because it is the colors of the army, black and gold. We also have a competition team, which is our legacy team. They are the reason why we are called the Golden Knights. They go out in, in skydiving competitions, win gold medals, na uh, national and international gold uh, competitions. And then we also have the team, uh, the tandem team section, which they travel all over the, the U.S and they provide tandems, which tandem is you have a jumper and then you have a passenger in front of you with a, a larger parachute to give that person the experience of a skydive. 
So their job is to do that with, for dignitaries and uh, special authorities. Now, I did mention that they brought me into the Golden Knights so I can start up the, the military freefall section to go out and help the, um, the airborne, the military freefall community. But after I did my year on the demonstration team, they did come and ask me, Sergeant Robbins, are you ready to start and go into this new program for the Golden Knights? And at that time, after spending a year with the demonstration team, I found my calling. Our job on the demonstration team is to go out and perform live aerial demonstrations for the American public and to bridge the gap between the American public and the Army. We go, we land, we throw our parachutes on the ground, we lay them out, we go and we, to the crowd and we grab, you know, young kids, uh, teenagers who are who are interested in joining the army, and we help they help us pack our parachutes, put it up back on our back, and if they're there for the air show, if we're there for an air show, they watch us jump on our second jump with the parachute that they just packed, with our supervision, of course. <laughs> um, and just another thing that the, the demonstration teams do, we go to high schools and while we're out there, we're talking to, you know, the students of the high school, I can see myself. You can see the individuals that are out there who are high energy, adrenaline rush, you know, people, and you can tell them, look what I do for the army. This is my job right now in the army. I go around and I talk to individuals. I jump out of airplanes and I, I perform for large crowds, air shows. We jump into high school, college football games, major league baseball and football games. And we're just, our job is to show. It's not everything you see on TV, what the army does. There's other things that we do in the army. We have nurses on the team. We have truck drivers on the team. We have uh, explosive ordnance disposal technicians on the team. We have a plethora of jobs that people have chose to do in the army, but have found out about the Golden Knights and come to the Golden Knights to become a one of the prestige members on this team. Well, that's, yeah, you know, and it, people don't think about all the all the other activities that take place and all the other jobs that are uh, that are involved in something like the Golden Knights. Uh, and it's a you know it's a really interesting aspect to bring up. Now, so you came in for a specific purpose to the Golden Knights, and they uh, asked you to um, to also qualify. Uh, is that a similar thing with the nurses and truck drivers and, and you know, these other jobs as well? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, for the Golden Knights, a lot of people who, a lot of the Golden Knights that are on this team right now, they've took it upon themselves to go start skydiving on their own to a local drop zone. They enjoy skydiving. They're in the Army. And they find out about the Golden Knights, and they're like, I like skydiving. I love the Army. Let me put those two together. And they come to, they come to the Golden Knights for that reason, to go straight into the assessment and selection and become a Golden Knight. Because of my job in the Army, I was able to jump out of airplanes for the Army, and that's where all my experience came from. Okay. It, can you, um, and especially for the the, the audience that we're uh, talking to here, um, the videography part uh, in specific, um, I would like to hear a little bit more about that and what um, you know what all that entails and what you know what are the complicated parts of it, what are the fun parts of it, what's the you know what's the in between. Um, so the fun part is. It's 
being able to capture what the Golden Knights do and being able to put that footage out to the American public so they can see what we do. If you're, if you're on the ground and the Golden Knights are jumping, if we don't do videographers, we also have uh, smoke canisters that we use uh, to show what, so you can see us in the sky. But if you're on the ground and you're looking up at 12,500 feet, our airplane flying over, that's the only thing you're gonna see is our airplane. And if we don't put the smoke on, and if we don't have a videographer, you're not gonna see what the Golden Knights are doing. Is If the clouds are right, and there's a backdrop of clouds, you might see some little black speck falling through the sky until our parachutes open, and then the crowd's like, oh, there's the Golden Knights. But when we do these aerial demonstrations, we put the smoke, it's red smoke, it's the normal uh, concealment smoke that um, the military uses, and we rig it up so that when we jump out of the airplane, we can ignite the smoke and you can see every jumper in the sky and where their position is. And then as everybody comes together, it's one tube of smoke and it looks awesome. If you haven't been to an air show or any event that the Golden Knights are jumping in, I highly recommend you try to get out to one of the shows. And as part of the videographer, I think the most complicated part of being a videographer is the, the pressure it puts on you to be in the right position at the right time to get the right photo. And not only that, you're jumping with a helmet, you have a camera on top of your helmet and a video camera on top of your helmet. So you have this system on top of your head. A lot of times our videographers are out, hanging outside of the airplane before the team jumps out so they can get the exit and watch everybody leave the plane, which is sometimes probably the most exciting part when you, you know, that's where your heart drops. You're like, they just jumped out of an airplane. Yeah, that's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a neat part of it. And so you're not, you don't have any cameras in your hand. Uh, everything's on the helmet. Yes. Everything's uh, on the helmet. And so, do you have any way to assess and see if you're if you're getting the right shot or? So that that's another a difficult part of the job. Um, prior to leaving the aircraft, prior to taking off, you, the cameraman is usually setting up outside, looking at the the lighting from the weather and the clouds. They're adjusting all the 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 uh, they're adjusting the camera to make sure they're getting the right shot. And then once you leave the airplane, what you have set is what you have throughout the jump. Um, it is a, di uh, a photo camera. Obviously, we don't fly with our hand on top and press the button. There is a switch that comes down from the camera into your helmet, and it comes out, and it's called the bite switch or a tongue switch. And there's a little button. You put it into your mouth, and it, either you bite down on that button, and it takes the photo, or you push the button with your tongue, and it takes the photo. That's how you get the aerial photos. Okay. And that's what, you know, so, and probably a piece that people don't uh, understand necessarily, uh, because if you go to a civilian jump, uh, you know, they might have GoPro strapped, and they might have this and that. Uh, but the Army has regulations for everything, uh, and it's all based around your safety, uh, you know, and, and security and everything else. And so there's a lot of regulations that are that are developed around uh, uh, the airborne operations, right? And so you guys have to adhere to a lot of those things. Yeah, we do. Um, the Golden Knights, our key focus is safety. Everything we do, there's some kind there, – there's been – Test. There's uh, safety evaluations on every item that we jump. Anything that we can, we uh, research and develop, it, there's there's some sort of safety involved with it before we even jump it. Uh, to become a camera, a videographer, you need to meet the criteria. You need to go jump, and we start off with just the GoPro. Then we add the camera, and then we we start um, you start practicing on your body flight. Because you don't want your camera guy flying into the formation at, you know, we fall at 120 miles an hour. So you don't want that that person getting over a formation 
and the formation losing the air because it comes off their body. It's just like if you were driving a car and they put the slipstream and you can see where it's going. Same thing comes off of our bodies as we're falling through the air. And there's certain spots you don't want to be in, especially with our smoke burning. You don't want to be inside that because it can also it can hurt you and it can hurt the uh, the camera. Yeah. And that's yeah, yeah. So so you're not floating out there with your cell phone in your hand. And, no. <laughs> uh, it's, are there any? Um, I mean, so now you've, you're you're sitting on about four years uh, in the Golden Knights. Uh, do you have any stories that stand out above any of the others that you know of a a, a special moment or something that you know you, you know you had to step back and look and say this is my job. You know, this is crazy. Uh, there's been a couple of them, and uh, I'll give you two of them. Um, one of them is uh, we we were at a air show. Uh, we were jumping for an air show, and I got on the ground. We went to the recruiter booth, and we laid our parachutes out. I grabbed uh, a kid that came and walked over, and this kid was so excited to just be involved and help me pack it, his uh, pack my parachute and just to see the smile on this kid's face um, and just it, ma it made me realize that I'm not doing it because I love to jump out of airplanes. I'm doing this because I the crowd loves to see us jump out of airplanes and be able to talk to someone who just did this crazy event and jumped out of an airplane and be able to talk to them and tell them our army story and tell them what the job, the offer of, the, of you know, that the army can give you. And it's just another, you know, just like when I was in YPG, it's just a little, a little thing in my head about the Golden Knights. If you can just Im implant that into someone's head as you're sitting there talking to them you could possibly change a child's life as they're growing up and they can you know they get 17 18 years old and they'll remember man i still remember that time i was at this air show or this event and i talked to this golden knight and he was so cool he let me pack his parachute i want to do that and there are plenty of golden knights on the team right now who have been at an air show saw the Golden Knights jump and said, I'm doing that. And we have them sitting in our ranks right now. The second one is I'm a huge football fan. We were able to jump into the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, Thursday night football game against the Carolina Panthers. And I was able to bring my son to the game. He stood on the sidelines and watched me jump into one of our favorite stadiums in the NFL. And he was there on the sidelines to meet me as I walked off the field. That right there is also showing me that I'm doing it for something bigger. And my son has been around me jumping out of airplanes since I joined the army, but this was a different excitement that I saw in his face. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, you, you can't, yeah, you can't, uh, remake that experience. No, you can't. Um, yeah. if, if you were to talk to a high school student, uh, and they said, you know, this is what I want to do, what, you know, what guidance do you give? You know, what, you know, so once you step past that point of, you know, this is, this is cool, I see it, I, and I want to do it, you know, now what do you say is, okay. Uh, what are the steps that you take to, to make this dream a reality, right? So uh, first and foremost, if, if talking to a teenager and they, they're, they're coming up to me with these questions, I need to get them to a recruiter. They need to be in the Army. They need to pick a job that they're going to love. And like I said, we have over 150 different job opportunities that they can do they can do inside the military and the army and start skydiving. Go out to your local drop zone and all you have to do is go up to anybody who's skydiving there and say, 
I want to learn to skydive. You start skydiving. You have to get, when you come into the Army, you, you there's no set time. Obviously, you have to go to basic training and your advanced individual training and get to your first your first duty station, duty station. And then when you get there, and if you have the jump, we need a minimum of 75 to 100 jumps. You need to have a clean military and pers and civilian uh, record, which if you're just coming in the army, I don't think you've done anything unless anything bad. Um, and if you're in the army, you pretty you got a pretty good good you know civilian record. And then go on to our website, goarmy.com, look up the Golden Knights, get our packet, our um, our fill in packet, fill out the packet, submit it to us, we'll review it, and hopefully you're coming to the next Golden Knight assessment and selection. That's awesome. Um. I believe that is about it. Um, is there is there anything uh, you know has, that you that you want to depart uh, comments with and and say, uh, you know, nah, nah, this is the best job ever. Um, I, you know, this is definitely the best job. One ever. thing to note, you know, and we talked about this uh, offline, but uh, you know, so. You, you did end up finishing your degree through the Army, uh, right. which was, you know, so you fulfilled that uh, uh, that need to 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 be doing something and, and be out there, you know, jumping out of airplanes and, and doing all the cool stuff. Uh, but the Army also allowed you to, you know, the means to finish a degree and all, all those things as well, right? I mean, that's... Yeah, I was, I was going to touch on that. Um, like I said... I needed to do something more to f fulfill my high energy personality. I got in, I joined the army, got in the army. While I was going through my military career, the army actually paid for me to go go to school and get my degree. So I, before I joined the army, I was paying for college classes. I joined the army, and the army gave me money for school and I was able to use that to finish getting my degree. Awesome. And it's it, it's amazing. And that, you know, we have the, the the GI Bill which is, you know, they give you college money when you get out of the army, but you don't touch any of that money while you're in the army. It's called tuition assistance. And the army gives you a certain amount of money to go through so many credit hours through a semester. So I still have my gov uh, GI Bill when I get out of the Army if I want to pursue going back to school when I get out. And that will be paid for by the Army again. Awesome. And if if Hollywood decides to write a movie about Jesse Robbins, the, the flying videographer, uh, who, who's playing you? Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> growing, growing up, uh, there's only one person growing up that people would always tell me I look like was Keanu Reeves, but I don't see it. I've never seen it, and that was some. Of, and while I was in high school, some of the some of my teammates when I played baseball would call me Neo, for, and yeah. I was like, okay, if that's what you say. That seems like a good role for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he already knows how to how to skydive, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Uh, hey, we really appreciate your time, and I appreciate you being with us. Um, I, I look forward to to seeing uh, the next show, and uh, you know, maybe maybe y'all will make it out here for the for a show as well. Look forward to seeing you. So, Sir Robbins, uh, thank you for your time, and uh, if anybody has any questions, you can you can reach us uh, on social media, uh, through the website, uh, um, and I will also send out a follow-up email to uh, to keep you all informed of where you can see more about Sheridan Robbins and the Golden Knights. Thank you all very much. <laughs>